Today we're going to be going over triangle congruence theorems. Our essential question is why would it be useful to know if triangles are congruent? First, you kind of need to understand what congruent means. Um, whenever you have two congruent triangles, it means that both sets of their sides are congruent to each other and both sets of their angles are all congruent to each other. So they must be completely the same. One cannot be bigger or smaller than the other. They have to be exactly the same. Now the second one could be rotated, translated, or reflected. Um, it just cannot be dilated. It can't be bigger or smaller. It has to be the exact same. So the first thing we're going to go over is how to write triangle congruence statements. So you need to know that the symbol for congruent, um, it's an equal sign with a little uh, tilde and yay's symbol at the top. So it looks like this. So anytime that you see that, it means congruent. It means they're the exact same. Here's an example of two congruent triangles. So in these two triangles, um, you could call the left one cat and the right one dog if they were separated. But whenever you talk about two congruent triangles, whenever you're naming them, um, they must be named with the corresponding parts. So in other words, um, in case you don't remember for angles, each of the letters are a different angle in those triangles. Um, so the angles must be in order of the angles that are the exact same. So this is kind of what I mean by that. Um, all of these little bitty lines, first of all, are called tick marks, and they tell you which sides are the same as other sides. So a side with one tick mark will be the exact same length as a side with another just one tick mark. A side with two tick marks will be the exact same as a side with two, and a side with three would be the exact same as a side with three. So that tells you which sides are the same. In order to figure out what angles are the same, you have to figure out where they lie. So in this case, this C angle is in between one tick mark side and a two tick mark side. So over here, we have to see what's between a one tick mark side and a two tick mark side. So it's O. Then whenever we look at the next letter, let's look at A. It's between a one tick mark and a three. Now we have to look over here. What's between a one tick mark side and a three? So that's G. And then the last ones that are left are T and D. So those are the angles that are the same. They will be congruent angles if you were to measure them. Um, of course, not in this picture exactly because my drawings aren't perfect, but um, in a perfect world, they would be perfectly the exact same angles. So whenever you go to name them, um, the colors have to be the same. So if I the first triangle, it doesn't matter how you name it. You can name it whatever you want. You can name it C-A-T, T-A-C. TCA, it doesn't matter. Any order for the first one, you can name it whatever you want. I like them to spell things, so I'm gonna name it CAT. So triangle C-A-T. Um, also, the first thing, this little triangle, it tells you that this coming up name is going to be the name of a triangle. So that just says, just like we have the angle symbol and then we name it, um, we have a triangle symbol as well. So for C-A-T, C is yellow, A is green, and T is blue. And we want to write that that triangle is congruent to the one on the right, but we have to make sure that we name it the same. So if we went yellow, green, blue for this left, left one, we have to go yellow, green, blue for the right one, which means the other triangle will have to be O-G-D. And that's how you would name um, congruent triangles. I'm gonna show you one more example. So here's an example of two triangles that are stuck together. You have a left-hand triangle and a right-hand triangle, and then they share the middle. So um, since they share this middle, you can clearly see that the left one is the same as the right one, and this left one is the same as this right one. And since they share the middle, it's gonna be congruent to both the left and the right because it shares it. Um, so the easiest way to do this, to see it, the first step that you should always do if there are not two separate triangles is to separate them. So I'm gonna redraw both of these triangles separated. I'm gonna redraw the left one first. This is what the left one would look like without the right one. Now I'm gonna redraw the right one. Now you can see them separated a little bit. It'll be a lot easier to highlight them this way. So I wanna name the first one car for obvious reasons like to spell things. 
C is between 1 and 2, so between 1 and 2 is B. A is between 1 and 3, so between 1 and 3 on the right one is also A. And then the R's are what's left. So I'm going to rename the left one triangle CAR. So that means that I have to redo the right one, I'm going to have to go yellow, green, blue. So B, A, R. So that's just basic naming. Now we have to go over all the different triangle congruence theorems. There are five of them. We're going to start off with side, side, side. So the short for side, side, side will just be SSS, and you won't have to write out side, side, side on your test. You should just write the SSS. Um, you'll get the hang of it a little bit more. Um, here is an example of what a side, side, side triangle, con uh, a picture of two triangles together being side, side, side could look like. It doesn't mean that's what it will look like because there are lots of different ways that you could put these triangles together or draw them. Um, so this is just one example of what it could look like. So in this example, you're given um, a top left triangle and then a bottom right triangle. They are separated by a diagonal, and they clearly show you that the top side is going to be congruent to this bottom side, and that this left side is going to be congruent to the right side. But since they share this one, it will also be congruent. Um, so first, separate the triangles. Here's what they look like separated. Now on your test, what it'll look like is you'll just have the, these two triangles here. It won't say side, side, side. You'll have to tell me it's side, side, side just from the picture. So the way that you would do that is you would just label what you're given. You're given a side here, you're given a side there, and you're given a side there. So clearly since there are three S's, it would be SSS or side, side, side. That's how you would find it for your test. The next thing that you would have to show me on your test is all the congruent sides, since the theorem is side, 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 you'd have to tell me which sides are congruent to each other. So um, to do that, you need to do your highlighting. So do that first. Um, my A is between a one tick mark and a two tick mark. Between one tick mark and two tick marks are C. My B is between a one and a three. So between a one and a three is now D. And then lastly, those are left over. So let's start with sides. What you have to write is three different segments are congruent to the other three segments from the other triangle um, to prove that it's side, side, side. So on your test, it'll say proof. And these are not the ugly proofs that you might have heard about for geometry. It's not going to be terrible. Um, those proofs definitely are terrible, but I've kind of taken them out of cur the curriculum a little bit because you won't need them unless you happen to be a math major. It's the only time that you will need them. Um, so otherwise, for the rest of you that don't plan on being crazy like me and becoming a math major, you won't need to know how to do formal proofs. So I do expect you to know how to prove that your answer is right, but not necessarily a formal proof. So that's why we're doing it this way. So for this proof, you just have to write all the segments that are congruent to each other. So let's start with the one tick mark. On this one tick mark, this segment is called AB or BA. So AB, we have to say what it's congruent to on the other triangle. AB is yellow, green. So on the other triangle, yellow, green is CD. On my next one, um, for the two tick marks, it can either be named AD or DA. So since it was yellow blue for my second triangle, yellow blue is CB. For my last segment, it's the three, it um, could be BD or DB. Since it's green blue, your other segment needs to be green blue, which is DB. Done. So that is the proof that those triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And since all three sides are congruent, it definitely means that both triangles are congruent, which also means all the angles are congruent. So the yellow angles are congruent to each other, the green angles are congruent to each other, and the blue angles are congruent to each other. Even though it's not shown, once you know that the triangle is side, 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 everything of that triangle is congruent to the other one. Our next one we're going to look at is called side angle side. 
And here's an example of what that could look like. The very first thing that you want to do is separate the triangles. So now that they're separated, you can clearly see that two sets of the sides are equal to each other. But what we're missing from side angle side is the angle. And the angle must be between the two sides for it to be side angle side. But if you look at the original picture, it has two lines that cross. And if you can remember back to the very beginning of the school year, we went over what's called vertical angles. Two angles will be congruent to each other if their lines cross and they're across from each other. We also called it the bow tie, if that kind of brings back memories. So it means that this angle will be congruent to this one. And these that I just drew are called arcs, and they show you what angles are congruent to each other. Um, one arc is congruent to one arc, double arcs are congruent to other double arcs, and triple arcs are congruent to other triple arcs. Next we want to start our highlighting so that we can write our proof that it is side angle side. So um, it is easier to deal with the angles if they're marked because you can clearly see that they go together. So O is the same as O. And then T is between an empty side and a one tick mark. So between the empty side and the one tick mark is D. And then whatever is left will be the same. So first we have to talk about a side. Um, let's do the one tick mark. So OT or TO is congruent to. And since it went from yellow to green, the other one would be yellow to green, which is OD. Next, we're going to look at angles. Um, angles are a little bit harder to name. They need to have three letters whenever you're doing congruent triangles because you need to know which O you're talking about. Are you talking about the O for the left-hand triangle or are you talking about the O for the right-hand triangle? So to do that, you need to name it with three letters, um, not just one. So whenever you name it with three letters, remember that the angle that we're talking about must be the middle letter. So O has to be in the middle. So it can be T-O-P or P-O-T. And since the first angle went green, yellow, blue, the next angle has to go green, yellow, blue. So angle D-O-G. Lastly, we have to talk about the last side, so the two tick mark side. Um, it can be O-P or P-O. And since it went yellow, blue for the first one, it has to go yellow, blue for the second one, which would be O-G. So on the test, when you go to figure out if this is side, angle, side, you would label what you're given. You're given a side, you're given an angle, and you're given another side. Um, you don't want to start with the A whenever you go to name it because it's between two other things. You always want to start at the end, so you'd need to start with one of the S's. And so it would go side, angle, side, or it would go side, angle, side, when you would go to name it. You always want to go towards something. You don't want to go in this direction because nothing's there. So you always want to go towards something, which would make it side, angle, side, or side, angle, side. Now we're going to look at angle, side, angle. Here's an example of what that could look like. First thing you always want to do whenever you have two triangles put together is separate them. Now you can clearly see that we have two angles. What we're missing is the side. But remember whenever they share a side that that side is also congruent on both. So this side is congruent to this one. So to figure out that it's angle side angle on the test, you have an angle, you have a side, and then you have an angle. And this one's easy because it's straight up and down. It's red angle side angle. Now we want to start highlighting. So one arc on the top one is A, one arc on the bottom one is E, two arcs on the top one is E, two arcs on the top one is A, and highlight what's left. For our proof, we need to write an angle first. So let's do the one um, arc angles in the top one. The one arc is an A, so A must be your middle letter. So either P-A-E or E-A-P. 
since the first one was blue, yellow, green, the second one must be blue, yellow, green, so T-E-A. The next thing we have to look at is the side. So on the top one, that's either A-E or E-A. This one went yellow, green, the next one needs to go yellow, green, which is E-A. Lastly, we need to name the last angle, so the double angle. On the top one, E is the double angle, which means E has to be our middle letter. So it could be AEP or PEA. And since the first one went blue, green, yellow, the bottom one has to go blue, green, yellow, so TAE. The next one we want to look at is called angle, angle, side. 